Assalamu alaikum, good evening, welcome, and Juma Mubarak once again from Legal Ease, the show that converts legal jargon into legal ease. If you watched us a couple of weeks ago, you saw we did a show on environmental management. Uh, then there was a break in between uh, uh, viewing, unfortunately, or fortunately, rather, should I, have, should I say, we had uh, a special Hajj expose. And then, unfortunately, we had another break in communication with live programming. But we are back this week, alhamdulillah, and we are back with environmental management. I promised you that we would deal a little bit more with environmental management. On the show uh, a couple of weeks ago, on the 11th of September, we had Francois Joubert. We are now back with Francois Joubert, and he is an environmental management, environmental uh, environmental law, mining law, uh, and natural resources legal expert. In fact, he is one of the foremost experts in the country. He has 15 years experience in environmental law and natural resources and minerals and things of that nature. He also forms part of numerous international and local organizations that deal with environmental management and natural resources. And he's going to navigate, assist us this evening with navigating through some of the acronyms you're going to hear, uh, things like NEMA and CITES and uh, abbreviations such as the WMA, what are they? What do they mean? What do they mean to us? And how do they impact us as living human beings within a living environment? So let's say good evening to Francois Joubert. Francois, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us again. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have uh, experts like yourself on the show and uh, to help us, uh, as I say, to understand what we sometimes know but don't really have too much knowledge on. It's a fantastic pleasure again, and it's nice to speak to the listeners and the viewers, and hopefully we can assist them in uh, dealing with daily, daily problems in the environmental field. And it's not only, as I always say, greeny bunny agar stuff. Mm. It's real life activities which may require you to have a license, and if you don't have a license, you may be seriously penalized. Yeah, well, look, we talked last a uh, couple of weeks ago, should I say, when we first did part one of environmental management. Uh, we said that, you know, environmental, ma environmental management, sorry, rather, um, has a very close connection and is, in fact, de dealt with, in, by, by and large, by things like the Criminal Procedure Act uh, and other of these enforceable, should I say, legislations where these criminal penalties, offenses, fines, prison time, all these types of things. A lot to talk about. Uh, just as, as, as an intro, we, there was Rhino Week, uh, International Rhino Week, should I say, uh, which happened a few weeks ago. In fact, it was shortly after our last show. Um, there's been a lot of other uh, uh, green and blue and brown events which have taken place in the past couple of weeks. Uh, we'll talk about those as well, Francois. Sure. Okay. So let's get into it. Uh, also, just to remind you that this is an interactive show. Uh, we will be taking calls. The phone lines are not open yet, but they will be open. And when we open them, we will notify you. The number will come up on the screen. And please feel free to contact us uh, and to ask Francois Joubert, an expert in uh, environmental management and environmental law, should I say. Francois, let's get into it. Uh, I want to talk very quickly about something that we dealt with. Um, we touched on it. At the last, at the last uh, uh, meet, uh, last interview we had, and more importantly, um, it's now come out in the newspapers. It's something relating to environmental ma environmental law uh, and the banks. Uh, just take us through that. I don't know if you've heard about it, and if you do, what have you heard, and what do we know? Absolutely, um, Nadim, you're referring, of course, to um, what we know as lenders' liability right. or potential liability. Um, basically, what happened was that. All of these activities having a, a very significant impact on the environment. Mm -hmm. Some of them you cannot change, mining or, or huge industrial activities. Most of them go through a licensing process mm -hmm. or environmental impact assessment process. Mm -hmm. You go through this process, you get your authorization, and you are monitored under the conditions of your environmental authorization. Right. However, in the past we've seen many perpetrators that have not gone through those processes okay. and have just operated, polluting the environment and not only having an effect on the environment but also on human health. Okay. And so, so the connection? And the connection came where people said, we cannot just find those guys mm -hmm. because some of these um, inst um, um, institutions have massive kitties, so-called kitties, right, right. and they can easily pay the fine. Right. We must stop it before it even starts. At the head? At the head. Or should we say at the source? At the source, and the source mm. most of the time, as we will see later on mm. this evening, is money. Right. You go to the bank and say, I need capital to build this project. Right. 
and to finance this project. Give us an example, real, real, real um, life example, something that you perhaps dealt with or, or heard about. Call it a development, perhaps, maybe. A golf course. Right. I'll use a golf course because right. golf courses are notoriously bad. Okay. I want to develop a new mm -hmm. um, international star-rated golf course. Right. In the Wild Coast area. Right. So we immediately know this is a very sensitive area. Mm -hmm. um, in some places, it will be a, a water-scarce area, and I need money to do that. Mm -hmm. However... Whilst I'm busy with my process, mm -hmm. and in the past, um, they, uh, uh, developers just commenced and they, they continued without authorization right. because they had, they, they had the money from the banks already. But we're talking many, many, many years ago, or, or not so long? We're talking recent years. You know, there are still illegal, illegal um, estate developments and developments all over the place. Okay. However, the banks throughout the international realm, mm -hmm. started to realize that if they can have an influence on lending practices, especially where it is uh, to do with environmental sensitive uh, matters or developments as well as socioeconomic matters, they can have an influence. Okay. And it started in America with some of the larger banks coming together and they formulated what is known as the equator principles. Okay. And the equator principles are really a set of goodwill principles. It's, it is not compulsory. Mm -hmm. But once you have signed it, it becomes reportable. And okay. almost um, you know, embarrassing if you have uh, succumbed to lending practices that are not in line with the equator principles. Right, right. Now, the equator principles in very short, um, brief strokes deals with you have to look at the environment, your impact on the environment, mm -hmm. your impact on, on labor, your impact on socioeconomic, your impact on the area, the local country where you are, where you are developing. Mm -hmm. And those huge institutions, financial institutions, lending very large amounts for mining, um, mining projects or industrial projects, mm -hmm. must first, before they lend, go through those guidelines and say, listen, what will be the impact in terms of these guidelines on the environment and the seven, I think there's seven guidelines. Right. You must first answer all of them in the positive, mm -hmm. and then you will get your money. Okay. So at least we've, we, we have seen that. Another so, example... So, th so that's currently in place as we speak? The internationally, and most of the international banks are part and privy to that, even our own banks. Okay. So, so they won't provide the lending so, uh, un unless and until... Uh, those requirements have been met. Absolutely. Okay. The second thing is reporting standards. Now, if they do, sorry, just to, just to stop you there. If they do now provide this lending, uh, take take a relatively small bank, or take take a, uh, what what some would maybe d perceive as not such a massive loan amount, uh, and it's kind of you know what, let's just give them this ten or fifteen million. Uh, the interest on it is huge. Uh, you know, we, we'll deal with it afterwards. And it hasn't complied with those seven principles or those principles that you mentioned. Nadim, then they at risk to be uh, held liable as well. Our mm -hmm. National Environmental Management Act, NEMA, mm -hmm. dictates that who can be held responsible. Mm -hmm. Any person, and it includes institutions, of right. course, who directly or indirectly contributed to the detriment of the environment. Okay. And... If you realize that you are contributing, you must either stop it or implement reasonable measures to mitigate such um, impact on the environment. Okay. And that is where the bank, bank as an indirect party mm -hmm. to the ac activity that's going to be undertaken right. by, by, by merely lending, the lending of, of, of the capital, mm -hmm. becomes indirectly involved. I mean, is and, it, and, 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 and sorry, no, sorry. Um, because it's an important point. Yes. By default, if I do not get my authorization and I've already spent a hell of a lot of money on my environmental impact assessment and all my studies, and I as the developer have, um, have no more money left, mm -hmm. by default, the bank becomes the, the, risky, uh, the party that has the most risk in terms of the money that they've already lent to okay. that party. Okay. Also, if I fund a manufacturer of um, industrial chemicals, of course, and that that whole manufacturing plant 
goes bust because someone is liquidated, mm -hmm. by default the bank becomes the owner and therefore the, um, uh, the liable uh, party in absence of the polluter who is a man okay. of straw. Okay. Because our act says strict liability. Yes. Joint and or several liability. Okay. Okay, so, so let me take it a little bit further. Let me throw a little bit of a curveball. So assuming now I purchase a stand on this golf course for purposes of residential, uh, residential purposes, all right? And I take a loan out with one of the four big institutions, the banks. And I now go into default. And now and I say, hold on a second. You know, yes, I, I might be in default with respect of this loan. But if I do a bit of investigation and I find that the bank loan lent me this money and it, they lent me this money within a development that hasn't complied with, say, for example, the greater principles, do I have potentially an avenue to pursue where I could then turn around and say, hold on a second, the money is not due to you as you would be unduly enriched, for argument's sake? And it's a little bit of a curveball. It no, might no, be a bit complicated. Um, um, it, it, is, it, it has not been tested in our, in our um, courts. Mm -hmm. However, the principle is, is, is spot on. Okay. Um, let me just be clear. The equator principles only applies for very large um, um, projects okay. over, a certain, okay. over a certain amount in other countries than, than your own. However, okay. in our own country... Um, lending practices through the sustainability index for banks for or the corporate governance rules um, uh, stipulated by the King King Commission. Code right. as well as the New Companies Act okay. that says you must have a socio-economic committee to look at these type of things. Elaborate on that, the socio-economic committee? Um, the, the Companies Act says that every every company over a certain amount of people there are certain criteria. Right. Must have a socio-economic committee mm -hmm. that looks at corporate social responsibility. And of course, part of corporate social responsibility is, especially if you're a lender. Right. But is it defined? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's defined. Um, people must look at the Companies Act and specifically which section deals with it. Mm -hmm. But it's something that you can go to a company and say, hey, you are supposed to look at these things through your committee. Mm -hmm. Why are you not looking at your lending practices um, uh, that, you, that your lending practices has, have on, on environmental okay, um, areas uh, or sensitivities? Now, to get back to your question, if I'm a purchaser of a property right. and the bank has done no due diligence, they merely lend a couple of million... Yeah, I'm talking um, two million to, 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 two to million, understand and to, to build. Uh, no, but they, 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 they lent, they financed the development. Right. Okay. But I, I'm but saying, I'm, I'm putting, okay, you're right. But before okay. that, mm -hmm. they financed the development. Right. But they didn't do any due right. diligence. Right. Absolutely. Absolute no due diligence. And in the... And we're talking to due diligence in respect of the environment. Of the environment. Impact, yeah. And in those um, environmental stages, let's say, um, in the environmental assessment stages or maybe the lack of environmental... Um, impact assessment stages reports were provided to them that said listen this is a risky mm -hmm. development because it's in a sensitive area and most likely it will not be authorized or it will be illegal or whatever okay they proceed to lend the the money to uh, finance the, the development right and on the back of their finance you go and you buy a stand because the development has, has gone through yeah, the, the stages yeah. and no one yet knows that it's illegal. Right. Two years later or a year later or six months later, environmental authority shows up and says, uh, why didn't you go through the environmental process? Mm -hmm. This is illegal. You must stop it. Or, or, or you, but stop it. I mean, let's assume it's you built. You must stop it. Let's assume it's built. The Act makes provision that it can actually be demolished. In practice, we have found that that will not happen, you know, it will not happen. However, then you, the developer must go through a Section 24G mm -hmm. rectification application, which have, um, has a fine attached to it. Okay. And that fine per, per non-compliance 
can go up um, uh, de depending on what kind of, let's say it's related to the Waste Act, it can go up to 10 million per non-compliance. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say the developer does not have that money to mm -hmm. pay the fine. Mm -hmm. The Act says, I can hold you criminally liable and I can put you in, in Correct. jail Correct. Um, if, you're not, if, you, if you can't pay. But I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to check who has been involved directly all or the way indirectly. To the, all the way to the source. And if I can see that source is the bank, certainly they can be held uh, responsible and you will also have a claim against the bank. Scary stuff. So the next time you, uh, <laughs> just before you take your next swing of the golf course, just make sure that the golf course you're playing on has not impacted the environment unnecessarily or illegally. Let's take a short, quick break, uh, sure. um, uh, Franco. We'll come back in a few seconds. Uh, stay with us. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum. Throughout history, there have been many champions of flavor and taste, but Jimmy's still reigns supreme. Our Killer Grills menu boasts the sauciest steaks, spicy and tender chicken dishes, beef burgers. We are leaders in explosive and flavorful taste experiences, resulting in amazing journeys of delight. Try us for our superior taste, adding excitement and zest to your life. New restaurants open country round. Jimmy's Killer Grills. The addictive taste. Park Avenue Stationers is one of the leading independent office supplies companies in the country. We are motivated by a strong desire to deliver service excellence by simply doing it better. Get unbeatable prices and select from a wide range of products for all your needs. Printers, paper, office supplies, school supplies and everything else in between. We are the vendor of choice. Park Avenue Stationers. HP Preferred Partner, your office supplies specialist. IBO have become synonymous with world famous brands which are now available to discerning clients at their store just off Marlboro Drive in Santon. We feature a wide selection of fine branded shirts as ideal accessories to quality suits and jackets available in store at affordable prices. So come visit us today or give us a call. IBO, international brands at the best prices. Sailies Travel Bags are wholesale suppliers of luggage suitcases direct to the public. We stock Samsonite, Cellini, Delsi and Polo. We also have the latest handbags, school bags, purses and wallets. So if quality is what you're looking for at great prices, then visit our showroom at number 9 Gold Reef Road or Mondi Johannesburg today. SA's leading bathroom design store, offering exclusive products and the world's leading brands in sanitary wear, taps, tiles and bathroom fittings. Why settle for less when you can have the best? We offer value for every budget. Visit our exclusive showrooms to experience why we are different. Exclusive brands, customer service, variety, value and backup support. Classic trading, luxury bathrooms. Come get your dream car and let your story begin only at Dada's Motorland. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to Legal Ease. Uh, just to remind you, we are sitting with François Yubé, environmental law expert and specialist, and uh, he's just given us a very interesting uh, uh, insight into uh, environmental impact in just something as simple like where we, where we live, where we play our golf even, uh, and we're going to hear a lot more. Uh, François, we're going to open the lines also in the next about three or four minutes, uh, take some callers because I can hear uh, that people are very interested in, in what we're talking about. Let's just get into, and uh, we, we've dealt with the banks, uh, let's get into something that's a little bit more, a little bit closer to home when I say that is that South Africa specifically deals with this on a daily basis. Our courts, our criminal courts, are full uh, of these types of things and what I'm referring to here uh, specifically is abalone. Uh, the trade in abalone uh, and then from there we'll talk about the trade in ivory and then we'll get eventually into what uh, we, we, we refer to as this rhino catastrophe. 
uh, Rhino poaching catastrophe. But let's let's talk about abalone just very quickly. What is it? Uh, why is it so rare? And in terms of what is it protected? You know, most most people do not know the word abalone. No. They know it perlamun. as perlamun. Perlamun, right. So the Africans know abalone as perlamun. Right. It is a localized mollusk, sea mollusk, um, soft cell, a hard cell, soft, soft uh, intervert, intervert, um, invertebrate uh, animal, right. <coughs> which is extremely valuable for the, uh, the ecosystem in the sea. Right. A lot of other animals eat abalone okay. and only abalone. Okay. And without abalone, they don't have um, things to a food eat. Source. And, mm. and, and that food source then, or lack of food source, goes all the way. Okay. Um, it is an endangered species. It is highly prohibited to, to do any harvesting in the wild now. Of there's an there's a absolute moratorium on it. Right. You do get um, aquacultured abalone. But that, um, as we will see a little bit later on, must go through environmental impact assessment process, mm -hmm. and you have to have an environmental authorization mm -hmm. to have an aquaculture project. Okay. But in terms of abalone, there's, a, there's a, a wrongfully so perception that dried abalone or even abalone in its natural state um, has certain attributes, especially in the Asian countries or the Eastern uh, side of the world, markets, yeah. Eastern world uh, markets, it is perceived to be a sexual stimulant, okay, and uh, uh, um, uh, especially to do with An aphrodisiac, uh, aphrodisiac, right, um, and that's also true for rhino horn. But uh, but I, I, I believe, and I mean, I'm not sure. I, I think we mentioned this earlier, but scientifically, medically, biologically, it's been proven that it does nothing. Absolutely, many times over so, but. The problem is this comes from ancient medicine. And we have seen that ancient indigenous knowledge systems may be of immense value um, coming from thousands and thousands of years ago that a certain root may cure your toothache. That is so. Okay. But in the mix, there are also smoke and mirrors. Right. Where people say, listen, or the shamans or the medicine man say, if I give you a little bit of this, mm. you will be a, a stallion. Yeah. And the problem is it is proven by beyond any any doubt that there's no no scientific no effect whatsoever. Effect whatsoever. So, okay, so let's get back to the root of the problem. So now we've got these 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 traders in, in Abalone, in Perlumun, they do it dry or wet. Uh, when it's dry, if I'm not mistaken, they grind it down and they make it into a powder. Absolutely. When it's wet, do they wait for it to dry or do they harvest it? Well, can can you harvest it? Sorry, are you, can, of, is of it course. possible? Of course you can harvest it, if, um, and that's where it starts. You, 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 what do you cause it to breed? Because it's a living organism, right? It's, it's you harvest it um, from under the sea. You dive. It usually sits um, underneath the rocks right. um, and cliffs, and it's difficult to harvest because it's got a huge muscle that sucks to, <laughs> to, to the, the cliff rock, yes, and right. the rocks. So it's quite a... A difficult so thing to sort of a hammer in and, and, a and you need to know how to do it. And that's why local people, right. unbeknown to them, because remember we have, we've had this discussion where we said abalone Balance. poaching mm. is a socioeconomic problem far more than just harvesting an endangered, endangered species. Right. In many of these small towns, let's take Horsten or Kallers or Hansby, Armanus, mm. where most of the abalone um, occurs, right. there are no job opportunities. Okay. But the kids and the young people have been diving since birth. They know exactly how to harvest perlamun. Right. The problem is they take it out, they put it in a, in a bag, and they get a thousand rand for that. Right. And it's easy money. And they do not see why this is a problem because they've been doing it forever. And, and it's plentiful. There's so much of it in the sea. So, so, so There so, used to be. Or at, at least this is the perception, right? Absolutely. Okay. So in terms of what is uh, abalone protected? In terms of our Biodiversity Act and most, most um, importantly, mm -hmm. as part of the international um, side to it, CITES, the Convention 
um, against the international trade of endangered species. Okay, so that so, so South Africa follows that. We are that, a signatory that that to CITES. Okay, and, and out of CITES, sorry, Nadim yes, came the National Environmental Management Biodiversity Act. Okay, and also the National Environmental Management. Uh, protected Areas Act. Okay. And most of those areas okay. where they now uh, are still to be found in the natural state are now protected areas in any in any event. So, so, so an attorney wanting to enforce uh, that uh, the, the, the the convention or the treaty would then do it in terms of one of those those acts, essentially. Uh, um, or should I say the state? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, as well as as um, and I'm glad you asked that question. We've we've referred to the. Uh, the overarching legislation called the National Environmental Management Act. Mm -hmm. Under the National Environmental Management Act, you also find the Na Biodiversity Act, National uh, Protected Areas Act, the Waste Act, Air Quality Act, mm -hmm. all of those. Mm -hmm. They are in turn called Specific Environmental Management Acts, right. which means they are enforceable through the principles or objectives of the overarching legislation, the NEMA. Right. And it is also the National Environmental Management Act that in, in, um, infers uh, the environmental management inspectors or the so-called green scorpions with their powers. And in terms of the environmental management inspectors powers or who, who could be, who could be um, regarded as an environmental management inspector, any government official. Mm -hmm. So you do see that the police in areas where there are a limited number of environmental affairs officials or rangers, that the police are also trained, um, trained to be environmental management inspectors. So, for example, if I was driving down the coast and I had a bag of Pere Lamun and I was pulled over by a police officer doing a routine check, in all likelihood he would know what's there and he would know essentially that that is a contravention of the act. Yeah. We, we, we hope. Absolutely. At okay. first you, you want to say that um, that bag belongs to your ex-girlfriend or you know, your um, mother-in-law or someone yes. because you are in serious, you are se in serious trouble. Yeah. I'm joking about it, but the fact is innocent people or seemingly innocent people get conned into criminal activities. In many of these old, uh, 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 smaller towns, mm -hmm. you, you find that um, pensioners mm -hmm. um, are approached and said, listen, Please just take these bags to Gordon's Bay or Somerset West or Cape. Mm -hmm. We'll give you 5,000 Rand, mm -hmm. which is a lot of money. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, just think about the same thing happening in Colombia or uh, Venezuela or any of those places where someone says, please just take this packet over the border. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't feel right, it, it's probably not If right. it's too good to be true, it probably Absolutely. is. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Now that, that that is a very good principle to stand by, and I, I think especially because the world, the the, the 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 universe really is becoming so specific when it comes to environmental protection. Um, uh, it's a very very crucial thing. That and you remember we have what is called in South African law, uh, South African law the principle of ignorantius rex non excusat, which means that's a Latin phrase for 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 a meaning which is that ignorance of the law is not excusable. If you are in possession of a, of, a, of, of a species that you don't believe or that you don't know is illegal, that is not a defense, the fact that you don't know. Absolutely. It might not be intention, but you most certainly will be in contravention of an act, and most certainly uh, uh, th that will be problematic. Uh, before you say your next word, uh, Francois, keep the thought. We're going to quickly go to a second commercial break. When we come back, the phone lines are going to be open. Uh, Francois is going to finish his thought. We have a lot to still discuss. Hopefully you've got your, your, your questions ready and your dialing fingers ready. Assalamu alaikum. We'll see you very shortly. Adega, an upmarket Portuguese restaurant that offers a unique and memorable dining experience. The restaurant offers a warm ambiance and was voted Best of Johannesburg, Best Portuguese Restaurant for seven years running. We aim to provide the best quality food and service. Make your booking today and enjoy fine dining at its best. Adega Restaurants. Always open, always good. Once in a lifetime prices at Lindsay Saker Moistry. Get our cars at staff prices like the Polo 1.2 TDI Blue Motion for 205,000 Rand. 
or the Polo GTI with sunroof and xenon lights for 288,000 or the Polo Sedan 1.4 Comfort Line for 184,000 Rand or the Golf 7 GTI with sunroof and xenon lights for 399,995 Rand. Lindsay Saker Moy Street. Fruit 10 Aloe Vera Juice. No preservatives, no additives. Good till the last bits. Taste it, you'll love it. Another quality product from Marhaba Trading. Spice Mecca's newly packaged spices, categorized by spicy orange, exotic red, natural green, and magical purple. Use our blends and seasonings, masalas, herbs, or pure ground and whole spices to create yet another unforgettable taste experience. Choose your color, choose your number. We have your taste. So come on, do it the Spice Mecca way, the cook easy way. What do you seek? Empowerment. Fulfillment. Knowledge. Strength. Success. Structured around the five sciences of Islam, a one-year intensive course at Medina Institute will equip you with the tools to navigate your way through the deen. With teachings that prioritize the Quran and authentic Sunnah, Medina Institute is a place of critical thinking and theological reflection. Achieve greatness under the guidance of Sheikh Mohammed bin Yahya an Ninawi and leading Islamic scholars from around the world. Experience the essence and spirit of Medina distilled into the foundation of this prestigious institute. Harness Cape Town's rich Islamic heritage and join a hand-picked group of students. Find light. Find knowledge. Aspire to know more, to be more, illuminate your future, apply today. MK Exotic Tours offers clients a complete service, including airport transfers, tours, excursions, car hire, chauffeur services, luxury accommodation and much more. We strive to ensure that client expectations are exceeded and that we always deliver a service of excellence, offering exceptional service, reliability and that we accommodate each and every exclusive need of our clients. MK Exotic Tours. Taking you places. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to Legal Ease. We've just been having a very interesting uh, chat off air about, about Parliament specifically and um, you, know, you know how it's dealt with. But uh, anyway, let's get back, Francois, to, to what you were saying. Uh, you, you had a thought in mind, you, you were going to say something? I, I, I just want to tell the viewers that anything that is indigenous to South Africa, which is endemic to South Africa, right. is off limits um, without a permit. Mm -hmm. In other words, you drive along the Karua N1 and you see a beautiful mountain tortoise. Right. You cannot pick it up because it's most likely an indigenous um, species. Right. And you need a permit for that. The same with chameleons. If you drive to the north, northern province, Limpopo, um, Pumalanga, mm -hmm. but more Limpopo site, you will see many people standing next to the road uh, selling chameleons, selling um, uh, tree ferns. Those are indigenous and yeah. it is highly illegal to have that in your position without a uh, position without a permit. You see, you, you talk about simple things like that. I mean, my daughter or my son or, you know, your, your daughter, your son, that type of thing, sees it, or told us, daddy, I want it and picks it up. Uh, but then you've got, and that's illegal, but then you've got no permit required or very limited regulation for the keeping of a monkey as a pet. Uh, and, that is, and that is something that I've never understood, really. And then you need a license for a dog. But, but then, you know, a, a wild animal like a monkey, and in the States, I believe, and only now recently there's an environmental um, activist or law, lawyer who's an environmental activist who's now only in the last maybe three years uh, embarked on this project to have the, the keeping of wild animals such as tigers and lions regulated. And even that is unregulated in the States. I mean, there was a story, just very quickly, there was a story in the States some years back. A man had a, a zoo, unlicensed. I mean, there was no license or regulation for it. He had lions and leopards and tigers and, and, and all these types of things. 
and he 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 he, he lost the plot. Uh, had a fight with his wife for his girlfriend. Decided, well, this is the end of it. Shot, opened up the cages for all the animals. Mm. Shot himself and let them. Well, there must have been about fifty or sixty wild animals roaming uh, the area. Mm. This was many many years back. But so, uh, where's the, the the balance? Where do we draw the parallel, the the, the, the sort of correlation between the two? It is it is the sad state of affairs, which is which is called the illegal trade in animal species. So just stop you or there. I uh, just want to remind the viewers that the phone lines are open. I apologize, uh, Franco, to cut you off. The number to dial, as you always know, and it appears on your screen, is zero double one zero eight six double seven double zero or one or two or three. Please call us. Uh, we're waiting for your calls. Uh, in the meantime, so but so you say illegal. Um, or some, or even unregulated or unmanaged. Right. Okay. That's if you look at um, the Iraqi Iraqi war, right. Um, at that stage, the Baghdad Zoo was was full of animals. Right. And then the city got bombed. Right. And those animals were left in their cages unattended for mm. days and days and days. Mm. And many of, of of it died in South Africa. You have to have a permit to pick up a indigenous chameleon. However, you may have a very valuable uh, species of tarantula. You can right. buy at a pet shop. Right. So it is a problem, especially um, the bringing in of exotic animal species into our own ecosystems. Right. Where you find that many, many farmers mm -hmm. these days will, as an extra income, um, have dams on their on their farms, mm -hmm. which caters for bears or for rail, yes, yes, uh, yes, trout, yes, 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 um, trout farms. You know, yes. Trout farms. Yes. The problem is if you bring in um, alien and invasive mm -hmm. species, mm -hmm. it can run down your natural um, ecosystem very quickly, and it it then just gets out of control. Of course, yeah, and that that that, that causes massive impact in the in the, in the environment. Uh, Francis, we've got a call on the line. Let's take this call, and then we'll get back to our discussion if uh, it doesn't assist. Assalamu alaikum, good evening, caller. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Karim. Ji. It's Karim from Durban. Salam, how are you, brother? Alhamdulillah. Even even your guest there. I just want to give you a small input on something. Uh, you must have read about the article in, in the paper about the guy who was mauled by a lion or tiger in the South Coast, I think North Coast, North Coast. And they examined the fencing, and the fencing hasn't been, hasn't been uh, updated for years and years. And it's a game reserve. Right. I don't know, but I can't remember the name. But this is the, the sad part that I want to just point out to you that uh, human beings have become so disrespectful to nature and environment. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look around cities and areas, people dump stuff, they just chuck things on the floor. They make uh, people dump rubbish. So that's one aspect, but uh, generally, people have no respect for human elements. Mm -hmm. They don't even respect their own human beings. How mm -hmm. would they respect animals? Look, I don't, I don't say everybody is liable and guilty about that. Of course. Mm -hmm. Generally, if you look at the decay in mankind, it is totally, totally disastrous because if we don't care and do not give love to these animals and destroy them, and the, 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 another aspect that unfortunately is unfolding in South Africa is we have such poor border control. Our uh, people are coming in from more black lives and center in the country, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, it's not controlled. And people who are, uh, are drug dealers, it's similar to drug dealing, mm -hmm. they're just saving money to take uh, horns away, mm -hmm. rhino horns, mm -hmm. and whatever. And I think it's about time that. Uh, the environment, uh, environmentalists must get tough and tell government to bring in policies where the people should be prosecuted adequately. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khairun, Jazakallah khairun, khairun. Very, very valuable input because you see, and what the caller does essentially, as you've obviously heard, is he, 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 he shows how connected environmental law is i mean he talked about trafficking he talked about border control he talked about uh, 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 you know regulation of, of, of building regulations as they relate to the housing or the protection of animals or the division between animals and humans it talks about all these things very important uh, and very interesting to see that uh, there is a, a, a perception out there i uh, thank you for your for your um, contribution i fully agree it starts with the man in the mirror mm -hmm. as long as we keep on purchasing mm -hmm. illegal Contraband, right? Be it um, a necklace with a horn, necklace right. with a horn, mm. or a chameleon, mm. we we fill the coffers of the criminals. There's a market, and you may say, I contribute to rhino poaching, and I'm all for that. 
But what's yet you, you go up to the northern province and you purchase uh, indigenous tree fern and you plant it in your garden mm. <laughs> in Johannesburg mm. or Pretoria mm. without a permit. Mm. And I think that's the problem. People must start regulating themselves. And it's a knowledge saying, issue. Mm. I will not take part in any... Um, it's not only animal mm. or, or animal species. It's also um, artifacts. Right, of course. It is a heritage where mm. you know you cannot purchase something which is... Um, it, it comes from the Mappen Kupwe area. I, I like that. It starts but you with the take man it and mirror. you pick it up mm. and you put it in your study. Mm. And you say, oh, it won't make a difference. Mm -hmm. If everyone says that, it will make a difference as it is currently with cumulatively the, with the Rhino on and all of that. We have another caller. Franto, let's take this caller. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, caller. Um, good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm Tony from Kimberley. Yes, uh, thank I you. I just want to ask Mr. Yubar uh, regarding the illegal dumping of waste. Thank you very Where much. Where do you report it mm -hmm. and what's the procedure to follow? Okay. Um, the Ill illegal dumping of waste is a huge problem in South Africa. And not only um, hazardous waste, mm -hmm. any waste. You drive and you see next to the road mm -hmm. there's a pile of, of, of garbage. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we must also, as citizens of this country, do policing on behalf of our government. Mm -hmm. In that if there's bags lying there, most of the time there will be some sort of a paper trail leading up to that. Mm -hmm. If you see, listen, I have found Mr. Wrongdoer. Then on the National Department of Environmental Affairs uh, website, there's a toll-free number for the Green Scorpions, the environmental mm -hmm. management inspectors, that you can phone and you, and, and you lodge a claim. I know those guys personally. They are good. They are excellent in their work. They are overworked, but they do get to any and all of those those um, complaints lodged. Brilliant. Remember the National um, Environmental Management Waste Act. Also, immediately, if you are, for instance, an officer of the peace, uh, police mm -hmm. or, 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 or um, whatsoever, um, yeah. it allows for a thousand rand fine for littering. Mm -hmm. And that's the type of thing that we need to start doing. If we see yeah. someone um, throwing something out of a window or throwing it on the on the roadside, you have to make them um, um, aware of that and say, listen, pick up your garbage. Yes. But many yes. times we just walk okay. by and we leave it. Thank you very much, Kola. Thank you for the question. Very Thank good you question. Okay. So, Francois, again, interesting to hear that people out there are understanding what it's all about uh, and want to know. Uh, you yeah. know, and very interesting that, that there is that, that, that hotline where you can call. We talked about the Green Scorpions. We talked about them last week, a couple of weeks back as well. Uh, let's just get back to something that you touched on, which I want to talk about now because I, I can hear the phones are ringing again. I want to just get into it. International Rhino Week was a few weeks ago, all right? And when I say international, it illustrates that the world as an organization or the world as a whole are coming together. And they themselves are saying, you know what? Rhinos are indigenous to Africa. I know there's a species of rhino in Asia. I appreciate that. But I'm talking about our black and white rhinos as we know them uh, and what is being done to protect them. I mean, if I look at the small, or the, should I say the organ, the, 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 the operations that have been done by certain ex-Navy SEALs and ex-military, uh, but of, in, of the USA, for example, um, who have come in and have assisted with rhino poaching. What is South Africa doing? How big is the problem? And if you can be, just be summarized, of course, we've got another caller waiting and he might add to that conversation, but just give me a, a, a tidbit on that. It is massive because mm -hmm. we cannot control it. It is a war. It is a war out there. And it's no longer just a poacher with a machete going in for an opportunistic kill. Mm -hmm. It is syndicates and cartels of syndicates which are highly funded yes. and, and st stacked with um, uh, automatic weaponry and uh, GPSs and the best things that you can find. Mm. I want to make this statement. To, um, Nadim asked me, what is the magnitude? Mm. If you look at the number of uh, rhinos left, black rhinos, there are only 7,000 black rhinos left. It may sound a lot, but this is an animal that's been around for 50 million years. We as humans have been around for half a million years. In real time, that's 10 seconds in the lifespan of the world. 
These animals have been around for much longer than us. If you look at um, the number of poaching, uh, rhinos poached uh, in the year 2000, mm -hmm. it was seven. In 2013, it was 1,004, three a day. Where rhino horn has become a more valuable commodity than drugs such as cocaine or gold, uh, it's fetching $65,000 per kilogram now. Per kilogram? Per kilogram. And we are losing it. However, we did find a little bit of, of light last week or two weeks mm -hmm. ago with a huge uh, syndicate being busted. Mm -hmm. But to give you a real um, a concern, mm -hmm. those 12 guys on the stand, arrested guys, were not, um, you know, criminals from poverty-stricken areas. They included lawyers. They included a, 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 a officer of the Hawks. There was game rangers. A I game believe. rangers, yeah. National Environmental Department officials, yeah. Sun Park officials, veterinarians. And that's so where... it is an organized, orchestrated uh, operation. You, just as doctors, we have said, I will contribute and I will live my life in service of, 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 of patients. The same with a vet. It says I would protect animals. And these guys Yet are... they are the guys providing the drugs to kill these animals. Let's take this call quickly, Francois. Uh, we're running out of time. I want to hear what this caller has to say. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, caller. Nadim, alaikum salam. How are you, Nadim? Wa alaikum salam. Okay, yourself, brother. I'm going to make quickly just to just to add an input on my last call. G. Uh, the, the, you know, if you have to look at the whole of Africa, and you, you if you read reports, and uh, lot of lot of lot of animals, not not only rhinos, extinct. They're getting extinct, like monkeys, baboons. Mm -hmm. I mean, you take Nigeria, you take Kenya. They have no control whatsoever, mm -hmm. and they don't have any respect for animals. I mean, look at the game parks, they do appreciate there are some lovely ones, but they don't care. And if you look at the fact of the fact, the matter is that uh, even our sea, our fish, our lovely fish, mm -hmm. sea beds are being polluted by industrialists who are so greedy for money, mm -hmm. who, who spill oil and uh, a lot of rubbish in the sea and uh, you know, water. Our, 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 our species of any of fish are going also away with kind of a problem. Mm -hmm. yes. And another thing is that I think it was a big problem. If you find this muti people, they make muti, yes, they kill animals. I mean, yes. they take animals to the park and they kill them. And the worst problem is the, the, the pollution that's been caused by taxis, which throw rubbish from the taxis, they check them on the road. Yes, I think the biggest problem this country faces is the local government structures do not have any parameters of Structure. trying to curtail these. We, we're going to uh, talk about... Now, yes. About using the different in the world, in the cities, yes. or wherever. The local government does not have a support, and naturally the government in South Africa is so lax with their laws. Mm. Guy would go to court, you know, in court, they give him bail, and he's out again, and he starts his nonsense. Absolutely. I think there's a whole structure problem in the country Just which has to be addressed with the Department of Labor, Department of Animal, mm. Animal, Animal Mind Just Affairs, and uh, you know, whatever. And I think if we don't hammer it out, we will never end this problem. And Africa Absolutely. is doing a worse job than what we are doing. And I don't know why, but they don't Brother care. Kareem, if, you look at the, if you look at some yeah. articles, you find yeah. that extinct, uh, extinct animals are being totally destroyed in Africa, which, yes. which, which are very, very, very sad. Sad and very sad. Thank you very much. Jazakallah, Brother Kareem. Jazakallah. Uh, Franzo, you know, just one thing I want to take out from that. We, we're running out of time tremendously quickly, but just he mentioned something which we, we had a very quick chat about structure infrastructure. Um, we had a very recent water scare, so to speak. Certain areas were out for weeks, uh, if, if, just over a week, I think it was. Three weeks. Uh, three weeks, three weeks. Uh, scarcity of water or a different problem? Just give me a quick, quick uh, summary on that. I know we've moved away from rhinos. There's so much to still discuss. <laughs> I'm probably going to have you back here again in a few more weeks' time, but let's just quickly talk about infrastructure. I think that's important. If I go with the official version of what happened with the water, water problem, um, our minister, um, Mokonyana, said it's probably just a technical glitch. Okay. Now, <laughs> to I refer to water pumps and the, all Absolutely, this, yeah. and I think right. she's correct. However... That is just a symptom of the, the real problem. The real problem is that South Africa's water infrastructure, the pipelines, the pipes from um, water management agencies, catchment management agencies to municipalities, have been put in place in the 1940s. Sure. 
typically it has a lifespan of about 50 years. Okay. So we, we, we see that we're far past the life Almost 40 years away of, 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 of that infrastructure. Yeah. With that is the critical shortage of proper um, um, skilled people. And here we're talking about civil engineers on the government side. Okay. I don't know if you know, but government internally has a, um, a, a percentage attached to critical skills. For instance, they need to have 250 uh, civil engineers. Currently, there's only six, uh, 78 engineers, civil engineers, mm -hmm. um, in, in terms of the water services side. Of that 78, 25% is between 60 and 64, mm -hmm. which means they will retire in five years' time. Mm -hmm. So we have that massive problem. If they cannot look at dilapidated infrastructure, um, a recent survey, government survey in mm -hmm. 2013, um, realized that 37% of all water channeled from um, the water agencies to the municipalities get lost in terms of leaks. That is more than the total annual volume that is pumped by rand water. Sure, that so is we so are scary. wasting a valuable, scarce, scarce resource like you cannot have it. Blue gold. I mean, we, we, we talked about it. We said, you indicated that the last time we had it, we, last time we interviewed you, that by 2018, 2019, we're looking at an end to a our stockpile. A serious stockpile. water scarcity. Um, and uh, this, 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 this little scare, and I'm almost glad it happened. I mean, this little scare uh, really should jolt us into thinking, you know, will we leave our taps on to make wudu? Uh, we leave our taps on to cook, the, uh, to, to wash the dishes. Um, there has to be a better way to do it. And we really hope that local government, like uh, the caller said, will take an active role in providing that information and those guidance. Absolutely. And, and, and I, you know, as I understand it, uh, uh, it, it is out there. Uh, it's just not reaching everybody and it's not reaching us fast enough. I think the priorities are sometimes not in line. Okay. Government's priority has been for the last um, um, couple of years mm. to provide people in need of potable water with water. Mm -hmm. We support that mm -hmm. vigorously. Mm -hmm. However, it should be a balance, balanced parallel process to say, whilst we provide portable water to people, we will look after um, dilapidated infrastructure. So that so we that can continue to provide. Absolutely, so yeah. that we continue to provide a good service. Franzo, we've discussed the green, we've discussed the brown, we've discussed even a bit of the grey matter, which is extremely vital to our environment. Uh, within our very green and gold South Africa uh, and abroad. And we know that this is essentially a massive problem. And we're very thankful to you and people like you uh, for, for assisting with these environmental laws, the amendments, the legislature, uh, proclamations, the enactment, all these things. And hopefully uh, it will continue uh, and will keep us uh, aware of our situation. As the brothers, as all the callers mentioned, a lady from Kimberley and the other two callers mentioned that it is a serious problem. And uh, I'm glad to hear that people are calling and I'm glad to hear that People are taking an active interest in this very serious problem. Uh, I want to say again, thank you very much, Francois. Uh, I sincerely hope that we will have you back on the show. Jazakallah to all of you out there. As you know, you are our most valuable resource. Uh, we want to preserve you just as much as we want to preserve our environment. So we'll see you all again next week uh, on Legal Ease, the show that converts legal jargon into legal ease. Assalamu alaikum, good evening, and thank you.